In August 2020, I uploaded my first YouTube video. It was about group, attach, and weld. In the past two years, Cricut has updated design space and my videos have improved. So to celebrate, I redid the video explaining the difference between group, attach, and weld to let you know which one you need to use and how to use them. Thanks for watching Hank's Maker Mentor, where I help you learn how to make. Group, attach, and weld are all ways of keeping layers of your design together. The main difference is the difficulty in separating them. I think about it in terms of relationships. Group is like being friends. You have some similarities and stick together, but everyone is still very much an individual and can separate easily. Attach is like dating or living together. You need time to sort out who gets what and rediscover yourself, but there's no legal work involved. Weld is like getting married. You and your partner become one. Separating is possible, but difficult and must involve legal fees and others. Like in the original video, I'm going to demonstrate the difference between these actions by creating a stop sign using a red octagon and a rectangle. If I want to resize and move things around, when I click the octagon, that's all it's going to grab. The rectangle won't be affected. If I click and drag to select both of them, I can move or resize them together, but if I want to do multiple things with them together, it helps to start by selecting group, attach, or weld. On Cricut Design Space for Desktop, they are found in the Layers panel here on the right-hand side. If you're using Design Space on Android or iOS, they are found by expanding the Actions panel in the row at the bottom. If they're grayed out, confirm that you have at least two layers selected. First, we'll use group. Now they are friends, and even if I just select one part of my stop sign, they'll both get selected and they'll move together. It also allows me to resize them proportional to each other. They stay together on my canvas, but not when I send it to the machine to make it. If I want to work with them separately, I can click ungroup. Next, we'll use attach. They're dating or living together. As you can see in the layers panel, they're still separate, but they have become the same color and will be placed in this position relative to each other on the cutting mat. Like with group, even when I just click on one section of the design, they will both be selected and they'll move or resize together. An important thing to remember with attach is that where these overlap or intersect, they will cut all of the lines. I use this for my test cut shape. I add a square and a star to my canvas, resize one of them so the star fits in the square, then center, attach, resize to about three quarters of an inch. When they're cut, I can weed out only the square, leaving the star on the carrier sheet to ensure my sharp corners are cutting properly. If I don't want my design together anymore, I can click detach. They become individual layers, but they remain the same color. Like with a breakup, you might have to reestablish individuality. The final way to keep things together that we're gonna cover with this video is weld. When I weld these two layers, they become a single layer in the layers panel. Wherever cut paths have intersected, only the exterior cut path will remain after I weld. When I created my first video, weld was absolutely essential when working with script fonts. Showing it with the operation set to writing makes it clear why. All these places where they intersect would cut. Your design would look choppy and not tolerate normal wear and tear as well. In May of 2021, Cricut optimized the font kerning for many Cricut and system fonts on desktop. Now, kern fonts are available on Android and iOS as well. When working with kern fonts, they'll weld automatically on the project preview screen, but remain editable on the canvas even after you save and close your project. This was really nice because when you weld the design, it becomes very difficult to change anything but size and color. There is no unweld. If you want to unweld, you have four choices. Undo until you get back to the design before you welded, which isn't bad if it's a simple step or two, but it can be a huge pain if they were complicated steps and impossible if you've saved and closed your project since you welded. Slice and contour, start from scratch, or just deal with it the way it is. With the kerning updates, you no longer have to manually weld fonts every time. 
However, if you ungroup letters to work with them individually, they're no longer in the same text box, so you'll need to use the Weld tool to merge them before sending them to the machine. A few tricks with Weld. I use group until the last possible moment when working with a design that I'm going to need to weld. Then I make a copy, weld it, and hide my grouped version. This allows me to have a version I can edit the entire time since it's grouped and not attached, if I forget to weld it before I click make it, I'll see them separated on the mat to remind me to go back to the canvas and weld it. If the insides of your letters are filling in when you weld, undo the weld, save it, and check out this video where I show three different troubleshooting options to change the spacing or temporarily resize to avoid this. Welded text no longer shows the name of the font in the layers label. You can still find it though by right clicking, going to image info, and in light gray, it will show you the name of the font. It's I Love Glitter. I hope you found it interesting to see what changed over the past two years in Design Space, even while working with some of the same functions. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you receive notifications when I release new videos every week with occasional bonus videos helping you learn how to make with your Cricut. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, bye.